Hey everyone, welcome to Coming Up Higher. We are Alicia and Whitney, and we are excited for today's episode because we have a dear friend on with us and someone who we've been able to minister with throughout the years and uh, just a, a lovely person and just a cherished friend, Deborah Watson. And a little bit about her, she has mentored teen girls in Wichita, Kansas and St. Louis, Missouri. She served with her husband as international missionaries for 12 years. She's shared the love of Christ through seven stage productions. Wow. Four of them she actually wrote, produced, and directed. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome. The three others, she taught others how to do what she has done. So she's mentored them, raised them up. And uh, she then began educating herself in writing screenplays and film production, which is what she is now currently doing. I believe she's the first... Uh, person that's worked in screenplay and written screenplays and things like that that we've had on the the yeah. podcast so yeah. Well, fun. Yeah. yeah so we're excited to enter there's actually there's 150 of us here in the Branson area which I found very intriguing oh. it's they they go outside of the community to find work so okay wow yeah well Branson may have to start springing forth with some some film Film festivals companies and, and fest yeah, yes. you put on a film festival here locally, but also just studios and stuff. We'll just have to start praying that God makes a way for these these local artists and talent to to use their gifting. So welcome, welcome to the show, Deborah. <laughs> it's my honor and privilege to be here. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your testimony. Tell us how your how God began to call you into the arts, into the film industry, and, and what what birthed that passion within you? Oh, sure. So it started when I was eight, actually. And um, we got our first color TV. Mm -hmm. um, it was before remote controls. You had to get up and turn the knobs on them. But my mom and I were watching the Miss America patch. It, it would have been 19... 78 and I was so impressed with the pomp and circumstance of the creative when they came out in their costumes of their countries and I got to see um, the cameras moving around on stage because back then you didn't have the behind the scenes you saw it's like live in front of you and I was just like wow like my whole being of who I am came alive when I saw how the cameras moved with such ease and the lights would, were um, coming on and off strategically. And I, I told my mom, I was like, I wanna do that one day. And my mom's response was, honey, I love you as my daughter. And I just have to be honest with you, you will never do that mm -hmm. because you're not built to be on stage like that. And you need to be realistic and um, think of something else. And I was only eight years old. I didn't know any better. My mom was the smart one. So I listened to her and the dream died. Mm. And from that, I became responsible and st stuck in reality and learned business management. And um, when I got into youth ministry and started Faith Walkers International, I was working with our youth pastor in St. Louis and went with the kids on a retreat. By this time, I was 29, no, 31. And um, who we, I was seeing this attitude in the girls of this kind of cocky princess. And it's kind of fun that you're interviewing me on the day that Hurricane Sally is coming through because that name means a princess or in the male version means peace and we're at this conference in Tennessee and I'm seeing this attitude in our girls and some of the other girls and it's like God just overcame me and I was like Lord how can I show them a different way of being the princess in the kingdom of Christ without this bow down and worship me attitude that's kind of coming along with that and I all of a sudden saw this play come into my mind and I started crying because I had never written a screenplay. I had never written stage productions. I had been in them in high school. Um, I had gone to them. I loved going to the theater, but never before had I been behind stage. And our youth pastor came up to me and he's like, are you okay? 
And I told him, I was like, Pastor Gilby, I think I'm supposed to write a stage production for the teen girls about how to be a true lady in waiting and not this haughty, arrogant princess that thinks she's entitled to everything. Mm-hmm. He's like, what are you crying about it for? You better get on it. <laughs> <laughs> From that moment, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And so I got a writing mentor. Her name was Jeannie Moore. And she's gone on to be with the Lord now, but she just really helped me unlock um, those things that had been trapped since I was eight, Mm -hmm. that I had no clue had been trapped. And we had to pray through some insecurities I had, some self-doubts that I had, and just some um, stinking thinking that um, I didn't realize was holding me back and chaining me down from the full, becoming the fullness of who God created me to be mm. instead of what the world that I should be. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's very, very interesting that oftentimes, and I know we've probably said it on this show before, but the Lord will reveal the giftings to you as a child. And I just, I find it interesting as you were sharing that story is while most young girls would have been all about the the beauty pageant dresses and oh look at her hairstyle and oh look at the the swimsuit you know and all this stuff and but you were saying oh look at the lighting guy oh look at look at the director with the headset on and then the booth telling them to go this way and that and and that was your gifting in action at eight years old because the, the lord already called you when he was knitting you and together in your mother's womb, that, that this is what you were supposed to be doing in, in one capacity or another. And, and that was revealed at eight years old. That's, that's so cool to me. And, it, and for the Lord to continue to show you as you got older, you know, you mentioned 31 and then he says, look, look, what do you see? You see something different. You see, these attitudes of these young girls, but he says, now I'm giving you a solution. Mm -hmm. And so many times God is giving us a solution to the world's problems in the forms of our giftings in the forms of our anointings in the forms of our talents. And, and he's, and he's asking us who's going to step out and who's going to walk in these things. Cause inside of you is the answer that, that the world needs right now. Right. Well, and something that comes to my mind is, um, when the Bible talks about God gives gifts without repentance. Mm-hmm. And so what started in you as eight years old, but then was squashed by the people in your life, um, squashed by life circumstances and, you know, doing the responsible thing, which we know that's what we did too. So we know <laughs> exactly where you're coming from. Um, but I just love that God didn't care that those things, I mean, he cares about the things that happened to us, but he doesn't care that, you know, you started at eight seeing those things and now you're 30 or beyond and just stepping into what you were, were passionate about at eight years old, like, because your gifting didn't cease just because, um, it did in the natural, mm-hmm. it didn't stop. God still had the plans and purposes for you. And so I love that. It didn't matter that you could have said, well, I should have started younger or, if only this would have happened. Well, I did. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Several but, times. <laughs> but you didn't let it stop you. And that's the important no, part. And, and today I just had this epiphany. I was 31 and Ruby Unleashed is about the Proverbs 31 woman. It's like, so just really, you know, he has a plan and a purpose for our lives. Even though we think one way, he knows another and when we get to that place of that fully relying on him and trusting him a hundred percent or even just trusting him 95 percent he is so faithful even when we're not Mm -hmm. and even making changes because of covid and rules and regulations and caring for our staff and our cast and our crew you know it's i don't stress out about it like i used to in my younger days because i've seen him be faithful over and over and over again yeah and it's i don't want to say it's sad that he has to prove himself to us in our human form um but he has proven himself over and over and over again um that i can't not trust him because that would be foolishness in my book yeah yeah it's just even like jonah he was he was running from the call or he didn't accept it in 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 that way but when 
when the whale coughed him up, he was right on time, right where he should have been in that moment. And so God's good to do that and direct us, even when we don't fully step in or some run from the call, some just don't believe in themselves enough to step into it. But he's always faithful to just put us right where we need to be when, when, when we need to be where we need to be. And so kind of walk us through, you got the vision for the play for the, for, you know, the young girls and, and, and things. And we know from your bio that you began mentoring young girls. Like, so what was the process from vision to, to execution of, of the vision? Oh, sure. So there's a lot of education. Like there was, um, and having somebody willing to hold my hand was the biggest thing. Um, and having those armor bears, one on the left and one on the right, so that when I would get scared, you know, they were there to just encourage me and spur me forward. And he just, um, you know, the process was so different each time that it was just one step in front of the other one and listening closely because there were times when I tried it on my own and it didn't work out so well, you know? And there's other times, well, like when we traveled with Tani Como, I had my vision written down of where I thought we were supposed to go and when we were supposed to go and it didn't come to fruition. And so I learned sometimes what my vision is and what his vision is can be two different things. And I don't want to be double minded or double vision because then you're not seeing clearly. Mm -hmm. So that means spending a lot of time in the word and just trusting him and not getting discouraged when the answer is no, because if he's saying no, it's for our good. It's not for our detriment at all. Um, even though it doesn't feel good, if we base our whole life on feelings as women, <laughs> <laughs> on chaos, I think. Yes. <laughs> Roller coaster for um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of what coming up higher is often like. In fact, this year I've been studying the breath of God and, um, um, when you reached out to me, I just got done reading um, a verse about going into the mountain. And so the mountain itself, so many times people, like I was like, okay, we're going to conquer this mountain, you know? And I realized that for this season, I'm supposed to be in the mountain. And for me, what that means is, is resting in him and letting him be that sheltering place because everything around me right now I mean, we can look at all the chaos around us. And if we looked at the chaos around us, or like when Abraham was going up with Isaac, if he looked at the fact that he was taking his son up to have him laid on the altar, that fact and that reality failed in comparison to the promise that Abraham had from God. And that's what Abraham clung to. So he was able to climb the mountain with no fear. I don't know if you guys have ever climbed the Rocky Mountains because the Ozark Mountains here are small in comparison. But you get to Denver and start going to those higher altitudes. For me, I can't breathe because the I'm in such a higher elevation and the air is thinner um, that I wanted to know more about the breath of God. And that's why I'm studying it this year. Um, because he breathes life into each and every one of us. None of us are forsaken by him, no matter whether we reject him or not. If we give that Judas kiss on his cheek and betray him, he's still going to love us, you know, and that's what's so amazing about grace. And so I think to like cookie cutter my footsteps, my feet have been in many different places. Some of them have been terrifying. I mean, being in the Philippines when um, Gracia and Martin Burnham were rescued and Martin's life was taken by the Abu Sayyaf and meeting one of the pastors who was able to smuggle food into them while they were in the jungle. It's like, how can I compare my journey to what theirs was? And our lives aren't really so much about comparing to one another, but just being obedient. And in the media and in the arts, entertainment, oftentimes we can get caught up in that of doing what others are doing instead of being fully who we were created to be. And that can become a distraction if we're not careful. Um, so I think really that's 
like if I were to give advice to somebody else, it's just, you know, really focus in and listen to the Lord. Because um, one of the ladies I mentored in St. Louis with her production, it's called The Garden of Life. And she did it for the um, elder community um, in our church group. And I talked to her a couple of weeks ago and I said, Trink, are you willing to sell your story so we could produce it out here in Branson? She's like, no, but can I come and direct it? I would love, mm -hmm. love to take a month and just come to Branson and do it. And it's such a beautiful story about an older woman that the neighborhood kids thought were, was um, mean. And um, I think she used the word crotchety mm -hmm. um, because they were just, every time they walked past her house, she was yelling at them. But when she fought, fell asleep, her garden came to life and ministered to her. And at this one time when the kids stopped and prayed for her, her whole life changed. Mm -hmm. And it's such a beautiful story and so colorful. And um, the message is you never know what somebody has gone through to make them who they are today yeah. and to not forget about the older, older generation. And so it was an honor to be able to help Trinka not just do Garden of Life one, but she ended up writing a follow-up and doing it the next year. And it really encouraged the next generation. And with Branson having such a large retirement community here, I thought, man, that would be such a great production mm -hmm. to have here for the local community. Yeah, wow. definitely. And that's one, one of the many things we love about you is just how you help raise people up. And, yeah. you know, you talked about the competition thing, and like in the music world, there's a lot of, you know, you said the art. So there's a lot of that as well. And there's a lot of what we would call like sibling rivalries, mm -hmm. you know, where it's just, I want to be better than her. Or I want to be better than him. Like, and really what we need is mothers and fathers to come alongside us or mentors um, to come alongside us and just show us like, it's okay that that person is doing what they're called to do, but this is what you're called to do. Yeah. And so you can celebrate them and what they're doing, but don't forget like you have a high call on your life and you have things you need to do. And I so appreciate about that about you is that you're willing to be that one that steps in and says, don't worry about competition and don't worry. God, like God has something for you and you don't have to, you don't have to rival with others for a, a spot at the table because God's already given you one. Yeah. That's, That's beautiful. I like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and not even just uh, helping others, but you receive help too. You know, you talked about having the armor bearers and, and having people uh, come alongside you and, and, and affirm the giftings in you and, and the screen screenwriting in you and but also saying that fear can't go into the next season or, or those mindsets or like you said the stinking thinking that can't go to the next season and so that's there's there's always that you know constant flow going on in the kingdom of god of people pulling other people up and and you know you're being pulled up at the same time you're pulling somebody else up and it's that's how we all elevate and that's how we accomplish what god has called us to yeah. on the earth yeah and your organization is called studio 222 films and tell us i have a feeling the 222 stands for something <laughs> so tell us a little bit about it that. it does it's yeah it's james 222 his faith and actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. We can have actions and we can have faith and they can be separate from one another. But when they're coupled with each other, that's when, as the world would call it, magic happens. Mm. I think that Disney probably understood that but didn't know how to put it into words. So he just put it into a mouse and let it live, you know? Mm. Um, but Pastor Brian Cutshaw, he was our pastor in St. Louis. He did, um, he's um, with Perry Stone now out at ISOW in Tennessee. And he taught us early on to staff your weaknesses. And so even while I have mentors walking beside me, and I, now they've um, developed into my board of directors, I know my weaknesses and I know my strengths. And I make sure those areas that I'm weak in, I, and I see that as a strength in somebody else, I ask them to come on board because I need them. Because um, I can't do what I'm doing alone. There's just, there's no way possible. And um, a lot of people tackle it, and I try to tackle it with a small team, and it can be done. Um, but to be able to do it with a larger team, and also be... Um, 
somebody who can change the um, economic development within a community um, and stand firm on that. That's probably one of the biggest pushbacks I've gotten recently since I decided to, instead of using volunteers and um, letting people donate food and, and do it that way, I decided to level up and do it like a business, a professional business should do it. And that's why Kevin Sorbo came on board. And it was Michael Carnes, a producer out of Nashville. He said, Deborah, how can you treat your staff this way? And I was like, what do you mean? I'm paying them double what they would make here in our community. And the ones that would have volunteered, I'm giving them a salary. And he said, yeah, but you're still paying them less than fair market salary. I said, can you show me what is fair market salary? And when I realized how, um, I don't want to say impoverished, but how giving our community is here, how they're so willing to step up and to travel and to do things for next to nothing. Um, we're brothers and sisters. We should be taking care of one another. And like my vision that I have that I hope the Lord will see come to fruition here, it's big and it scares me and it makes me cry sometimes because what it can do for our community here can be something very beautiful with the talent like I was sharing with you earlier. 150 filmmakers live here, but they have to leave to go earn a living and come back. And that shouldn't be. We should be able to be a community and care for one another. And our brother and sister or neighbor should not be eating ramen noodle soup. And we should not be feeding them pizza and, and little, the little taco salads in the, I don't know if you've ever Walking seen it where tacos. you get the, <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We need to level up. And um, yeah, so that means I'm going to have to have some outside help helping us level up. And um, yet even in that, the Lord has shown me so much of not robbing people of their giftings and their talents if they want to step up and help out, not to turn them away, um, but to welcome them, you know? And so that's kind of me right now. It could change by the time COVID's over with, but right now that's um, the calling that he has on my life. And um, five years ago, I know he said, don't make any major decisions about changes until the um, end of September in five years. And that's coming up in a couple of weeks. So I have no idea what's going to happen in a couple of weeks, but I sure I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the hope we have in Christ is when we're walking out what he's asked us to and we're being obedient. We, we know it's going to happen. How it's going to happen, we don't know. When it's going to happen, we don't know. But when he's called you to it, he's going to be faithful to complete it. And mm -hmm. I thought you brought up a, a good point as well about a workman is worth his hire, mm -hmm. whether you're in the church, whether it's, you know, humanitarian work or whatever it is, there's, there's still the giftings and um, the, the efforts and the education people have taken to educate themselves. That's worth a living wage that's worth, you know, not doing everything for free. And, and so often in the church, we, we do that. We'll say, Oh, come help. You know, it's, it's, it's for the Lord. And yes, it is for the Lord. But like, like we go back to the scripture, a workman is worth his hire. And, and we need to elevate our honor for each other yeah, in, in this day and hour, especially in the church. I, I want to honor the gifting in you, Deborah. And, and, you know, I want to honor the gifting of, of someone who comes and and acts or for the Lord or, or sings for the Lord or, or builds some, a set for the Lord or whatever. There's, there's something that I really think you tapped into there. That's, that's missing, but the Lord is, uh, he's renewing it and he's restoring it. And that's honor for the giftings and, and what he's placed in each other. Yeah. And another thing too, that you said uh, that really caught my attention is just, there isn't a big film industry in Branson and people are leaving but you have a vision. God's given you a vision to say, why not here? Mm -hmm. Why can't we do these things here? Like, yeah, it's not here at the present moment, but it can be and that we can work towards that. And I remember someone talking about uh, Chip and Joanna Gaines in Waco, Texas. And they have, of course, they're like the interior designer people that have the TV show fixer and stuff. Upper. Yeah, fixer upper. And 
Waco, Texas, uh, this person was saying was just like nothing and it was bare. And if you went like no one would vacation there, you know, it wasn't a destination just a town. college town. Yeah. Time. And <laughs> yeah. so, but now because they had a vision, they had a dream and they did it, they planted it right where they were at. Um, you know, it's, it's now a tourist destination and people will go out of their way. Alicia, I know you guys went. went out of your way to, <laughs> to go and see it. Um, and she got me a t-shirt and every time I wear that t-shirt, I, I, that's the comment. That's the shirt I get commented on the most is like, Oh, Magnolia, far, like we've been there. <laughs> um, you know? And so like, I love that. And I, it makes me just want to partner with you in like any way that I can of just like, yeah, that can happen here in Branson. And so let's do it. Let's mm -hmm. work towards that. Let's support it as, you know, sisters yeah. in Christ. Like, uh, we want to support that in, in, in the ways that we can. And I want to talk yeah. about, you know, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Cause oh, I, I can say here. <laughs> oh no, I was going to go ahead and move on to, um, your next project. So if there's something mm -hmm. that you want to say, you can. Oh, well, I was going to say, so Alicia, so, um, since I know where you live and vice versa, right across the street, there's like 800 and some acres that's on the market right now. Uh -huh. I told Mike racetrack properties on sale. And he's like, how much? I was like, it's only 4 million. He's like, no, <laughs> Debra, no. I was like, no, but on the front, we can have the restaurant and the theater and the clothing store. And behind the clothing store, we can have the sewing factory. And behind then we can have transitional housing. And, wow. and he's like, Debra, no. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, yeah, but <laughs> and he's I like, yeah, but nothing. Right? Oh, no. Yeah. Can I tell you something, Jim? and me have gone to that property and we've prayed over it because I do believe there's purpose for that. I don't know what it is. I even thought about yeah. what a cool homestead that would be. And you could have a worship center at the front or, you know, whatever, like, and so that's so interesting that you've said that. Yeah. Well, there is a big giant sinkhole on it. Mm. And so when I found out, I was like, wait, they know where it's at. So that means we could set cameras up on all four corners and like, Pray for an earthquake to cause it to sink and have some great footage. Yes. <laughs> but people could come or they could come in and camp. And as long as we know where that sinkhole is, mark it, you know, just say, do not enter this space and you'll be safe. And a friend's like, no, can I plant my garden there? And we have <laughs> organic vegetables for the restaurant. And people can like use a zip line to zip line across it to pick the vegetables. I was like, can you imagine what that would be like though when they reach down to grab their carrots and all of a sudden they sink into the ground? Yeah, right. <laughs> be like an Alice so. in Wonderland moment or something. Yeah. <laughs> but that's something. Yeah, but that I do believe it's been set apart for something. Um, because when we moved here is when they were cleaning it off for the racetrack. And that's when I said, man, Mike, that would be a great place for a studio. And knowing that there's a sinkhole and there's a beautiful house on the property that people could use for a stage set, it's already built. Mm. So, but yeah, for right now, it's a no, but I don't know what God's got in store. It's his land, you know? Right. And if that's meant for somebody to do something on, then right. let's do that's, it. That's something too that that I see in you that, that I believe God wants all of us as believers is to see something, you know, when, when scripture talks that the desert is going to begin to bloom. And if you go to Israel now, there's date farms, they've literally irrigated and figured out ways for the desert to bloom and bring forth crops. And so some of, wow. some of you listening, I even know, look at your little town and you're like, it, you know, what good can come from here? Like they said, what good can come from Nazareth, you know, and, and here the, the son of God came from Nazareth. But um, some of you listening are thinking my, my little sleepy town, what could it produce? I have these big dreams and, and where I live doesn't quite match up with that. But why don't we start believing and contending and cultivating the ground on which we stand? And, and maybe God's asking yeah. you, what if you're the one that, that says, has the dream and says, let's start cultivating and making that desert bloom. And so I, I love that about you. I think because we're all similar in a lot of ways, it's like, why not me? Why yes. not now? Why not Branson? Why not? You know, yes, I love it. <laughs> look out Branson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell us, tell us about, you know, your, your latest project and how people can even find Tani Como and studio uh, 222 and all that stuff. 
Sure, yeah. So um, Tammy Como is on Parable TV. Isaac Hernandez comes to the Branson International Film Festival, and he's now the general manager there. Um, so it is a free um, faith-based streaming platform. You don't have to pay for anything. We don't get paid anything on our film. It's just something that um, they have produced um, to be able to bless the church. Mm -hmm. And we're in the process of learning about Amazon um, video. So we're going to be putting it on there once we get our trademark back. Um, we had to get that approved in order to get the Amazon Prime video, which is different than Amazon Prime. Um, but that's still a step in the right direction. So um, not too far from here is the project we're working on, um, Moving from Hurt to Hope, kind of based on Kim Boyce's book, um, except it's uh, taking a look at um, domestic violence through the eyes of a teenage girl um, and how our relationship decisions as adults affect the children around us. And right now, I don't know if you've heard the big controversy about the movie Cuties. Mm -hmm. um, I've had one of the actresses mom actually watched it. She's like, Deborah, it made me sick at my stomach. I couldn't, I couldn't believe that Netflix would even air it. And then I had another friend just today say, you know what? I went ahead and watched it because I don't like to base my decisions and opinions based on the norm or what social media tells me. And it did. It made me sick at my stomach. But there is a message there of the extent that girls will go to in order to feel loved. And I was like, Michelle, can I please interview you? Um, because that's what Not Too Far From Here is really all about with the relationship between Lindsay and her boyfriend, Jackson. And he ends up raping her friend, Lacey, at a, at a party. He got drunk. He doesn't think it's a big deal. I mean, we were both drunk. It's, it happens. You know, no harm, no foul. And Lacey's over there going, but I said no. You know? And um, something happens... Um, on the journey, because Jackson is actually the son of their local high school principal, you know, and can't just rat out the high school principal's son. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's up here, he's up high, we're down here, and that's not the case in the story, and um, so the timing, like you guys were talking about, of seeing a Christian world point of view in a very messy situation, and how it plays out, what redemption really looks like, what forgiveness looks like when I'm sorry is never heard. Um, and sometimes it's okay to walk away. And sometimes you don't even get the choice or the freedom of that choice because of life circumstances. So how, what is your website? What is your social media? How can people follow this journey, uh, this inspiring journey? Oh, sure. So yeah, studio222films.com. Um, and same thing on Facebook, it's the Studio 222 Film Productions. Instagram, I'm not really good at it yet. I'm getting there. I have a marketing guy now. Awesome. <laughs> and Twitter, same thing. Um, we had not too far from here the movie, um, but follow Studio 222 Films because I'm spreading too thin and need to kind of hone it back in a little bit. So we're keeping everything on the studio page right now. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much, Deborah, for being a part of coming up higher today. So glad you joined Thanks us. Thanks for lifting me up today, guys. I mean, I, our gals, I really appreciate it. We love having you here in our community. I'm kind of selfish. I'm glad that you guys kind of stay around here, <laughs> but I know that he's given you wings to soar. And for COVID to be able to help you launch the podcast to soar beyond Branson is really cool. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, we just want to thank our listeners so much for tuning in today. And we know that you've been blessed and encouraged. Go check out Studio 222 Films um, on their website, on Facebook, on social media, because um, there's going to be a lot of great content. There already is on there. And in the days to come, there's going to be even more. And yes. so we want you to support and encourage, um, and especially Branson people. We want to make sure uh, we get to keep this stuff in our area and that it grows. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> so thank you so yeah. much for tuning in guys. We'll talk to you next time. God bless.